Hmm. Brings me back to the old, well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin. What a drop. Um, To be honest with you, I wouldn't be too worried about it anyways. Yeah, I've got the bears in front and all that, and it's like, oh my God. But we really need to consider what's actually going on. Bitcoin hasn't dropped because a whale has sold. Bitcoin hasn't dropped because some on-chain analytics have come into play and we're like, oh my God. Wall Street kind of wet the bed. What do we mean? Geopolitical tensions overseas between Iran and Israel. It's always on a weekend. Let me explain. When I was trading Forex, I would always have positions open going into the weekend. Now, this is why I've been saying that it will happen over the weekend. They always wait for the weekend. It's never during the week. It happens over the weekend and then the spillover happens in throughout the rest of the week as we start a new week. For example, I would be long on dollar yen. The weekend comes. I'm holding on to the position and I'm thinking, oh man, we've already got problems with Kim Jong-un wanting to test these rockets all the time. And nothing was happening during the market hours, okay? Then when it came to Friday night, the markets closed. Two hours later, Kim Jong-un starts to play bad boy and he starts testing these rockets. Well, what can I do about my position? I can't do nothing. I'm trapped. That's what I think is going to happen with this. We're going to go into the article very shortly. NASDAQ and S&P take a bit of a tumble to the downside. We've kicked off the week. Well, should I say we're starting off the month with earnings season coming into play. And we've got quite a few more banks next week declaring earnings. So you could say tonight's live is a little bit of a emergency update, but I wouldn't be too concerned about it, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to accept Bitcoin will go up and it will go down. Whatever reason they use is whatever reason they use. But now we've got Wall Street money in cryptocurrency. They're going to pull that liquidity pretty fast if they want to. Investors have seek the flight to the bonds because they're not liking what's going on overseas. Oil is getting ready to pull some very interesting movement to the upside because that's what investors do. They turn to oil. But it's not the first time that we've had tensions overseas because what we know is war is profitable. That's the sad truth. So whatever's happened now could be preparing Bitcoin for the halving event. It's all fitting, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? We've been sat at these all-time highs for quite some time and we haven't really been doing much. Bitcoin's now made the first aggressive move to the downside but has stayed within a specific range. And I'm going to break it all down for you so you guys don't lose your minds, but you have some scope on how to work out what to do next with Bitcoin going into the weekend when the flavor overseas will start to flourish. That's the sad truth, ladies and gentlemen. War is profitable. That's the that's the crap thing about it. Now we've got to find opportunity. That's the truth. Trading, you've got to have a certain kind of skin to be in the game. Already, it's a zero-sum game. And that means what? Well, one man's fun is another's hell. And if that doesn't sit right with you, you might as well get in a taxi with my butler, Sam. He's, he ain't been doing too well this week. Thank God I ain't paying him. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Traders Reality. My name is Tino. Let's have a conversation. Here we go. So, <clears throat> welcome, chat. What is good? Hope everybody is doing very, very well. Yes, I'm seeing here. I gave it a rest today, Tino. Ah, Mr. Crude Oil, ladies and gentlemen, he's stepping up. But next week, it's going down. <laughs> yeah, baby. Happy days to you, man. Well, th with that being said, before we actually get into all the charts and what have you, Okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have a look at what's been going on with the news and whatnot. I'm going to talk you through a couple of trades that I took today on the S&P. And I'm going to be explaining why having patience, knowing your asset is most of the time is going to pay you out. Okay, but you've got to know your asset. So I'm going to talk you through some trades that I took. 
this this right here. By the way, if you watch this, this guy's going to wipe his nose on national television, Bloomberg Live. Just it's hilarious. But I was listening to what this guy was saying, and then when he rubbed his nose, I was like, "Sorry, bro, that's that's unfortunate." So whilst he's doing that, okay, this is the headline that we've got: stocks get war jitters, fuel rush to bombs, markets wrap. I am scratching mine. Yes, I know. Markets wrap. Okay, so. Oil rallies as Israel prepares for a possible Iranian attack. Wall Street pars the bank's results as earnings season kicks off. So we go down, okay? Now, geopolitical risks are always going to be a problem for the marketplace. It will bring volatility, but then the market will come to accept what's going on. They'll price it in, and then they will just continue what they've been getting up to. Granted, it is a little bit of a problem witnessing Bitcoin taking a little bit of a tumbler to the downside. OK, now, <clears throat> with that being said, we we kind of we projected this move today. OK, and it played out very, very well for the guys in the platinum section. So this was our first projection today with Bitcoin. We were anticipating shorts for the for the whole day and we were expecting Bitcoin to break down. I always tell people always factor in a move to the upside where you can effectively load up a short from the highest possible point to see Bitcoin make the move to the downside. So they cleared the range and they sure did clear the range quite aggressively and went down to 66K. We had the same thing for Ethereum. We expected a little bit of a movement up to see the movement back down. We go into Ethereum and we can see Ethereum just took a presidential shoe bag to the downside. And look, I mean, I was being I was being conservative within my projection because I'm always looking to see where it's going to go and try and give me a reaction. All right. So Ethereum took the move to the downside. Top of that, we had Solana coming into play as well. And she also did exactly the same thing. So there's our setup right there. And then Solana came through and through and just completely ripped it to the downside. So that was a good play on Solana. We also had some Forex and some gold. We managed to exploit gold. We wanted to see gold try and clear out the 2,410 because that's what I was expecting from gold. And we effectively saw gold. Look at that. Look at that. Not bad, huh? What a stop run. By the way, this is them. I'm going to say this now. You might think gold's topping out. Don't be stupid. Gold is not ready to top out. This is equity hedge investors loading up on gold. We're coming back into these vector candles. We're coming back into these vectors. All day. All right? They're just buying some more. They've been selling a ton of it. Now they're buying some more. Okay? So just keep an eye out on gold, ladies and gentlemen. Euro. Euro's been a pain in the ass. It really has. We had a setup right here with the expectation of Euro to try and come back up. OK, might be something that happens next week. But all they did was just stall. Look what happened today. Euro not going anywhere. Pound not really going anywhere. Um, gold shooting up, shooting back down. I mean, looking at oil itself, like what happened with oil? Where's quickly go over to look at oil? There we go. Our projection on oil, like literally unbelievable price action today across the board. Sweep up recovery of the red vector candle because oil leaves the clue behind. Happy days. There's your projection right there. Madness. Absolute madness. And look at how they respect the range daily high. Every single time they come to that, they reverse from those points. Not every single time, but after an extreme move, you're always expecting price to reverse from these points. Okay? So, Platinum members, well done to you all. Mad love and respect for you guys. Tomorrow is the weekly review, so I'm just giving you guys the heads up that you're going to get that regarding a potential masterclass session on the plays that I took on the S&P this evening. So I'm going to talk you through that as well. And then we're going to get into Bitcoin. And then I'm going to let you guys continue about your day. Okay, cool. So what was my day like? Well, <clears throat> here is where we are with, I managed to connect it. So this is where we are with our trading for today. Now, you can't even see it. So, Ignore this figure because that's the sum of the last couple of days trading on these funded accounts. But today was around eleven and a half thousand dollars, and where I made these trades, I had a good trade, it, it, a reasonable day trading in the sense of a win loss ratio. But over the last couple of days, I've taken it's about two, yeah, two three days, taken eighty six trades, and I've only got a sixty one percent win rate. 
but we still come out on top because that's the nature of my trading. I'm scalping quite frantically. And we've also got a couple of the trades that I took today. So I was originally playing positions from the 5,154 point in the S&P. This is what I did. This is where I took my longs, right here. I'm going to show you on the chart because you can take this same logic and put it to your own test. Look at this. So this is the S&P. Go down to the one minute time frame. When you see my actual trade in the sense of where it actually went, you'll be like, wow, is that all you look for? Pretty much. So look at this. <clears throat> we took the trade. And it was in around the one, uh, the 5154 zone, okay? And that was at 20 to 7 this evening. And we got out of the trade like 10 minutes after, okay? And not even 10 minutes. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just about 7 or 8 minutes. What was it? 4, 9, 3. Yeah, no, 10 minutes in total. That's what the trade was. And what I'd done was I copied the trades across all the accounts again. So like I did last night, I had all of these accounts over here. And I'm not going to put them all there anyway. But what I did was I had to copy the accounts across the one, two, three, four, five, yeah, across the 10 accounts. Is that 10, two, four, six? Yeah, eight accounts, right? Now, this is where I made the entry. 5,154. This is why I took the long because of the green vector candle that appeared here. But why? Why was I taking the long from that point? I'll show you. This is where we were on the depth of market. See, price had come down and swept the lows, which was inside this area. I saw the stopping volume candle right here. That gave me a clue that they could be done with this range. Because as they were dropping down and they kept on moving lower and lower and lower, price action started to really stall out. And I was like, well, you should be really looking to get ready to come up. So I need to see a bit of proof. I saw this green vector candle, no good for me. I saw this vector candle, no good for me. And the reason why this green vector candle was no good is because it came from a move to the upside, okay? In other words, they had room to recover it. But this green vector candle that appeared at the lowest point inside of the range, if you can see, this green vector right here gave me the idea that they're getting ready to make a move back up towards at least the moving averages or even previous imbalances in the chart. OK, and that's where I made the entry at the 515, 5154. OK, we then took our entry point, copied the trades, and then it shot all the way up towards the where was it? 5154 to the 5169. OK, so it went all the way up towards the 5169. And what do you think is around the 5169? It was the point of control. That's all I traded towards. Now, here's a little trick for you. I always say it every single time, and the same applies to the Bitcoin as well. Okay, let me just pull up Bitcoin to put that example into play. Maybe not so much Bitcoin, but the S&P, they always look to do it if the actual interest starts to come into play. Okay, look at this. At the time, of the S&P taking a drop to the downside, the bonds market right here was trading at the highs because investors were getting rid of risk in principle and they were going to the bonds. So the bonds were moving up. So we had an inversion in the marketplace. Usually the bonds go up, the stock market goes up. Everyone's all happy days. They want low risk and they want high risk. But because of this situation with the pending war, okay, when I say war, I'm talking about the geopolitical tensions. The bonds started to move up, but the Nasdaq and the S&P were taking a move to the downside. I was expecting them to start taking profits from the bonds, start taking money out of the bonds to start putting it back into risk on the S&P, which is where the low came in, which is where from this price point at the 5154, I traded back towards the point of control because all the contract sizes here were very reasonable. They weren't so big. They weren't really bringing us anything. And when I see that on the depth of market, even with exo charts, we can do the same thing with Bitcoin. Look, if I pull this up for Bitcoin right here and move this over, this is the depth of market for Bitcoin. Where's the point of control? It's right here. That's where 3,188 contracts are being transacted. So that's the most contracts that are being transacted on Bitcoin at 69,393. 
You can see that it moved away from it and completely take the, taken the move to the downside, completely swept the range, went even lower all the way down towards the 65, which is a value area low, and then they instantly shifted price all the way back up. Now, Bitcoin moves a little bit differently to the S&P. The S&P and the CME, the futures markets, there's a little bit more regulation when it comes to the CME. That's why most of the time you tend to see the S&P and the NASDAQ always end up going back into points that they favor. In other words, the point of control. Look at where the market finished today. It's finished around the point of control. Look at the range. Look at the range of the S&P, 5,218, going all the way down to 5,150 for it to only finish there. And when you're paying attention to price making an extreme, that's when you get engaged because psychologically you are stepping in at a point where the retail trader is doing the wrong thing. Okay, so let's get into the program. Let's have a look at all the short sellers looking up. Remember the guys who were long? Yo! Do you remember that short seller holding your arm saying, don't worry, bro. I'm going to hold your hand, bro. Well, they held hands very well today. Just a quick question. With the exception of the guys in the platinum, how many of you were short during the New York Live? Give me a, ha a raise of hands. Type one if you were short beforehand. Type two if you were considering longs and be honest. Or if you had, actually, no. Type two if you had longs and you didn't pay yourself. Own up to it. I want to know where your head's at. I want to know. Before we start talking about a coin in the museum. Who's the, who's the kid with the missing teeth? Oh, that's a dude from, that's a, that's a cryptocurrency dude. That's a cryptocurrency dude. Here we go. Um, ones, shorts. Okay, good. Twos, fair play to you. Fair play to you. You're coming out admitting it. Twos. Twos. Okay, with the exception of longs, I'm talking in the visible range, like not long from 35k, no, just, just, I'm just talking like, say you went long from 60 or something, okay? Or wh whatever range you were on. I longed every, yeah, okay, cool. That's fine. Two, but I reduced my position to 50% thinking it will back, but it kept falling. That's good that you reduced your position. Don't get it twisted. You reduced your position. Tino, what does my height have to do with trading? Well, nothing. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, wife was close to giving birth, so closed all orders. Well, congratulations, Jay. <laughs> Talk about trading on the move, man. Fair play to you, man. Good luck to your wife, man. I hope she's... Well, why are you here? <laughs> you know? Swapped ETH for Link. I went short on Coinbase and made 20%. Happy days. Along the high and shorted the low. Okay, that's that's not good. Scalping doesn't care where price goes. That's the truth. Yeah, you said watch the 65,412. So put the buy there. Couldn't believe it hit. Yeah, interesting. I was long on oil, went short at reversal. Now long again. Happy days. So it seems like you guys are actually killing it. That's a dude from Liverpool. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Anyways, right. So... <clears throat> The question on our minds now is, what happens next? Well, look, the ETF has had quite a substantial amount of outflows in the last 24 hours, okay? Collectively, Coinbase Prime Hot Wallet has come to a value of 1.05 billion in outflows. That's 15,100 Bitcoin. And that's in the last 24 hours. In the last hour or so, We've had 661 from Coinbase, 538 from Binance, and then 394, 320, 319, 280, 263, 263, 226, 173. I don't see no black rock. They're probably not even interested in selling. But if we actually consider the outflows for the last week, We've got quite a bit of Bitcoin leaving Coinbase. 77,191 Bitcoin. Chow, chow. 5.39 billion gone. 
Binance Hot Wallet, 50,918, 3.55 billion. Ciao, ciao. So it's pretty interesting about the amount of Bitcoin that's left this week on a week-on-week basis. Pretty interesting. We'll go to inflows. And we're pretty much evens on that on the weekly. 24-hour, yeah, okay, we're, we're all right there. In the last hour, we don't really have that much per se. Robin Hood's stepping into the game as well. Now, looking at Bitcoin, I'm going to pull up a chart and you guys are going to answer some questions. What do we have, ladies and gentlemen? What market do we have? You see those? You see how that disappeared there? What market do we have? I want to know. Type one for buyers, type two for sellers. I want to know where you are. <sighs> Tina, do you think China's ETF will start buying the ETF and make BlackRock and other US entities rich or they will try buy it cheaper? We'll put it like this. China doesn't really like to buy oil in dollars. So it's going to be interesting if they're really going to show an interest in Bitcoin and use the dollars. But when you think about it, let's just put things into perspective. Bitcoin's taken a slump. The marketplace has taken a slump. Okay, China's just encouraged ETFs. They ain't paying premium. We don't know what could have happened. Because let's be honest, guys, if they really wanted to move the markets and if they're going to sell on the markets, okay, or market lower, there has to be powers at B, you know, there has to be. How is it so fitting that price always ends up moving? People know something beforehand. Bitcoin was taking a tumble tumble to the downside before there was even news about Iran. Okay? So was the S&P. The news has come out. S&P and Nasdaq tried to make a bit of a reversal. Like, you know. Here we go. One for buyers, two for sellers. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Majority are saying ones, ones, ones. Okay. Tino, isn't that the classic market maker sell model with the M top formation on the one hour time frame? Yes, there is the, the structure of the market maker. That is correct. On the one hour time frame, we just go over and have a look on what he's making reference to. And we do have a M formation in principle. But when you look at the bit, yeah, the bigger picture of it is you can see that we've got quite a few M's. Okay. So that's where you have to go into higher time frames to break it all down. Now you've got the classic M formation, which is first peak, retrace, second peak, continuation, retrace, down she goes. That's what the logic would suggest. Okay. And this is on the four hour. You go into the daily time frame for the holders. And you then say to yourself, okay, then does that marry up? Well, it does, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting and where I'm giving you the setup for going into the weekend. Okay. And then I'll let you guys be. Holders. Bitcoin has now invalidated the 5 and 13 EMA. Bitcoin, and listen, guys, this is serious. Bitcoin is the only marketplace or cryptocurrency is the only marketplace that is subject to geopolitical news. It's the only thing that can move. All the out of hours markets will do their own thing, but we don't have access to the out of hours markets per se. That means we can't trade Forex until Sunday night. Whatever happens overseas, Forex is going to gap up or gap down. Okay, so anyone that's holding positions in euro, pound, dollar, yen, just prepare yourselves for gapping activities. If this war in Iraq or uh, Iran does actually release these 40 missiles. Okay, so that, that's what the actual article goes on to say. Approximately 40 launches were identified crossing from Lebanese territory, some of which were intercepted. The Israel Defense Forces wrote in a post on X. US President Joe Biden said he expects Iran will attack Israel sooner rather than later. And his message Iran to Iran is don't do it. Oh, my God. Days, Biden, man, don't don't even start running your mouth, man, please. The fear gauge, the volatility index. This is important to watch. But the thing is, we only really need to watch it when the things start to get a bit problematic. Look at that. OK. When this now hear me out here for anybody new to this live stream, mad love and respect. And please make sure you like and subscribe. Just fill that flavor on the like button and subscribe. It costs you nothing. But anyways. 
When this goes to 30, it's consistent with you buying up absolutely everything. That's what the practice was. When it's high, you buy. When it's low, you hold. Realistically, you're selling. Go short. Okay? Now, because we're at a reading of 16, statistically, it doesn't suggest that we should start. We shouldn't start buying. This would suggest that we start selling short. Okay? Because if it's going to start rising from the sub-20 levels, that means we're in a bullish market. So the market needs to start coming down. For this to start going up and engage in huge amounts of fear to the point when it gets to 30 or in that level, that's when we then effectively buy. Okay? Because you would have been shorting whilst it's going all the way up to 30. And then you buy everything back that you've been shorting. And then everything goes up. Because when this goes to 30, it means that investors are, ex are showing us the highest level of fear. Oh, my God. Go back historically and look at when price goes to the 30 level. Okay. Look, you see, goes to the 30 level. That was COVID. This was COVID all the way up there. And if you were able to monitor this at the time of COVID and you ran along, my days. Obviously, it's free. It's madness. But... If you were watching the volatility index and you were paying close attention to it and you swore by it, you would have been able to understand what was going on with that. And you would have come to the charts and you would have been going long on absolutely everything. If you could buy oxygen, you would go long on it. That's exactly what that would be saying. So if this is now starting to show a little bit of tension, that means there's a lot of guys trying to build um, positions and puts per se. That means principally everything's coming down by the principle of the volatility index, okay? Now, holders, I said to you all that you need to be very, very careful with this range. This is, in principle, your buying range. They came down towards that 65 zone, okay? And that was from today. So go watch the live stream from earlier on. And they've reversed from that point. But what I want to draw your attention to, ladies and gentlemen, is this. We are currently at the 50 EMA cloud on Bitcoin. Holders, there still may be opportunities for you to load up. But this is where you start incorporating the 2020, 2020 2040 method. For anybody new to the live, let me explain. The 20... 20, 20, 40 method. If you have $10,000 and you want to distribute that capital into an investment, whether it be Bitcoin or anything, you're, whatever it is, the three working capital percentages, that means 20%, 2 grand, 20%, 2 grand, 20%, 2 grand. These are your working capital figures, Okay. Now, these working capital figures are the ones that are going to allow you to have flexibility with price. So if you've been watching me for a little while right now, when the presence of these two candlesticks over here occurred, you would know that Bitcoin, you would technically be in your first 20% inside of this range. You would have had one, two instances where you would have been able to take a little bit of profit. Okay. Now, Bitcoin's effectively trying to work its way in and towards that zone. OK, now let's make the assumption that Bitcoin is going to try and come down. OK, if Bitcoin breaks the 50 EMA on the daily time frame, that's going to trigger a lot of interest from retail sellers to try and run shorts. OK, and sell. Right. But this is an opportunity for the bidders to step in and buy again at a discount. So we could be going into a bidding cycle right now with Bitcoin because we're starting to see some of the bids coming into play and not too many offers are coming in to suggest that they want to try and mark price higher. OK, but this is on the daily. Right. The idea is that for the holders and I'm going to speak to you before that, but we have effectively got tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then we go into Monday. So really, we've got four days where the market can really do whatever it wants. So we're going to see four new candlesticks forming. Where Bitcoin ends up is going to be a different story. But this is how you're going to prepare yourself. The first area here is your 20%. You take one bow of the 20% of your capital, which is this one, and you load up 20% right here. 
Hypothetically, Bitcoin breaks the 50 EMA and goes down to the lower band of the cloud. You then load up your next 20% inside of this range right here. And then chaos unfolds. Bitcoin goes below the 60,000 zone. You load up your next 20% inside of that range. So now you are fully committed with your 20%. That means six grand of your 10 is in the chart. You've got that 40% over there sitting there waiting. Hypothetically, at this current price point between the 57 and the 55, we hear even worse news and it all goes to pan. Bitcoin then decides to do a sweep down towards the 50K, hits the 200 EMA, right? This area here, ladies and gentlemen, we would assume that there'll be aggressive bids coming in to buy up Bitcoin to effectively initiate a reversal. That's where the 40% comes in. The 40% comes in at this point. And if you manage to make a good return and price does go up in your favor, don't gamble with it. It's designed to commit 40% so that you can quickly take advantage of a two, three day move up, take the profit and free up the 40%. You have to have 40% behind you. Why? Because Bitcoin could move up from that point. It could then come back down again. Okay. For example, it could work its way back down and then it could try and slowly creep up ever so slightly. It moves up into a profit for your two, three positions here. Then all of a sudden it collapses from this point. Wow. I've got 40%. I can load up again at this point. Bang. You then load up and use the 40% again because this time the 40% that you had from the previous move is in profit. So that means there's more of the 40%. You've got more value. You've got more capital behind it. Okay. You load up again on Bitcoin here and then it makes a nice sharp reversal. And if you do decide to hold on to it, ideally try and take at least a decent return from it and then close off the 40% and you've just effectively and that's why you've got these three positions open. And you're effectively taking advantage of volatile movements in Bitcoin. So if we go from a day trading perspective, we can look at this and say to ourselves, OK, then what about today, Tino? Well, hypothetically, we have got lots of red vector candles coming into play with Bitcoin dropping down. Now, we could be going into Asia and it could get a little bit worse. So there's a criteria that we have to wait for. We have to wait for blue and green vector candles to come into play on the lower time frames to assume that they're basing out and the potential for the bids to start offering out again. But we need to wait and see what the market does this evening. Tensions overseas are going to be the catalyst. So now we're not really trading the markets. We're trading the response of what's going on overseas. So please, ladies and gentlemen, approach this weekend with your trading with big caution. It's news driven. They're just waiting to hear what Iran are going to do. Please trade with caution. All right. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. Again, if you are looking to learn more about the hybrid, just make your way over to tradersreality.com and you'll be able to become a member, check out the masterclass sessions and what have you, and you'll learn more about the hybrid system. But the hybrid system is free to download for anybody new, and there is a free course on the Traders Reality website to do. I suggest you do it so you can understand what I'm talking about and all the levels that we mention every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Mad love and respect to all of you. Please trade safely. Don't let Mr. Market Maker have a discount on your capital. Mad love and respect. Peace.